Hello my dear flip balls, it's me again, your Kitsune friend Foxbot. Welcome to my cozy corner in cyberspace where I love to talk to you and share my love for anime, art and video games. We are now starting the anime quiz, so let's see who knows their anime best. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know. <laughs> yes, yes, welcome everyone to the stream, thank you very much Foxy, that was perfect. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good to see you, Akon. Welcome back to the stream. <laughs> and yes, Patrick says really, really has to stop drinking vodka. <laughs> no, I always like to check in on Patrick since uh, Patrick has a habit of leaving us alone <laughs> randomly. <laughs> Probably on the search for more booze. <laughs> All right, as Foxy has, has already said, we are going to make a little anime quiz today. And let's see how it is with Foxy's anime knowledge and if you guys want to play along and try to get the right answers you are very welcome to do so all right then um i think without any further ado let's get started with the first question i found this little uh, trivia anime trivia um if you'd like to check it out i'm happy to share the link with you there you go there are some more over there. Unfortunately, this weird site doesn't have a search function. I don't know what uh, what idiot has programmed this. <laughs> anyway, let's get started with the first question. All right, folks, the first question is which Pokemon has an electricity storing pouches on his cheek, on his cheeks? Oh my God. We are starting out strong with me not being able to read. <laughs> Pikachu. A classic Pokemon and the iconic one with the pouches on their cheeks. Oh, and by the way, please let me know if the music is too loud because for some reason it seems a little loud on my end. Uh, but it's hard to tell how it comes out on stream. So I'll just turn it down a notch. And you guys let me know if it is too loud or too quiet. Thank you very much. And of course, you're absolutely right. Probably it is Pikachu. <laughs> All right, then let's move on to the next question. What alien race battles the Robotech defense forces? In Robotech, the enemy was the alien race of Zentradi. Holy crap, you are very good at this, Foxy. I have a feeling I've once again picked a too easy quiz. <laughs> but we will see how it goes. Akun says, okay for you? All right, thank you very much for the feedback. Very much appreciated. Please, always let your streamers know if they will be my end. It is very, very hard to tell. All right, all right, Akun, you go grab your snacks. Everyone, go grab something to eat. Grab yourself a drink. Grab, grab yourself a coffee. Make sure you are staying well hydrated. I mean, this quiz shouldn't take too long. It's, I think, 24 questions. Um, I may I may check if I can find another one after this one if it's if we are going through this one too quickly the plan is to stream for about two hours today because at 8 p.m. CEST our new friend Mai is streaming over on YouTube again and I would very much like to go over and support her since I do know uh, that over on, over on YouTube it can be a little bit lonely as some of you might know, Foxy and me started out on YouTube only as well. But we, we, we very dis quickly discovered that um, live views on YouTube are very hard to get. You rarely get recommended. And I have planned to maybe try to convince Mai to join us over here on Kick. But since it's only her second stream, I don't want to put any additional pressure on her. <laughs> As you can imagine, she already has enough on her hands as it is. Within your first streams, you're always a little bit nervous and trying to make sure everything runs smoothly. <laughs> and of course, there's always something breaking. <laughs> but um, regarding the Centredi, which anime is this Foxy? I have never heard of it. 
Robotech, a 1985 anime series about Mecha. Oh, I see. I mean, no wonder I've never heard of it. This, this anime is older than me. <laughs> Alright then, let's get on to the next question. Number three is, which anime series tells the story of the counter-cyber-terrorist organization Public Security Section 9? Ghost in the Shell Stand Alone Complex A fantastic anime series about the counter-cyber-terrorist organization Public Security Section 9 and their epic adventures. Well done, Foxy, well done. I love Ghost in the Shell. Number 4. Which anime series revolve around a boy who sells his soul to a demon? I mean, that's a very generic question that could be almost anything, I guess. That would be High School DxD. It's a romantic anime series about the main character Issei, who sells his soul to Rhys Gremory to become a devil for a day, but he remains a devil and has to fight other devils now. Hmm, yeah, that's what I guessed. It's a very... There, I think there are multiple enemies with people selling their souls to some devil or to a demon. Wait a second. Hmm. I mean, there's no high school DxD here. So what should we go with? I'm a little bit lost. Is it Devil Man? <laughs> that sounds a bit generic. <laughs> Black Butler. Oh, maybe let's wait for Akron. Akron is such an anime expert. And such a big brain. I have high hopes for this one. <laughs> I've never heard of Black Butler, City Hunter or Devil Man. I guess I'm the one who needs to Needs to learn a little bit more, <laughs> watch a bit more anime. <laughs> if only I had the time. You know what? I think we will just take a wild guess. And we will just go with Devil Man since it sounds so, so fitting. <laughs> of course it was wrong. No. <laughs> so what is the right answer? It's Black Butler. Foxy, do you know about Black Butler? Five, which anime is known for its giant robots, called Ebus, that are piloted by teenage pilots? <laughs> no, no, wait, Foxy. I'm the one asking his questions here. So, let's move on. Oh my god, this one is very easy. Foxy, how many Dragon Balls are there? There are seven Dragon Balls in the Dragon Ball universe. They form together the wish granté or Shinron, which can grant any wish you want. Of course, of course. That one was way too easy. Even I did know that. Alright then, uh, next one. Which anime character was sold to the circus? That's a tough one. The answer is Anna Kaoyama, the main girl from the anime series ANN Coolish Cutter. As a child, she was sold by her father to the circus because she has a heart made out of ice and a body that is too thin. When she gets older, she learns to dance the Coolish Cutter and uses it to break the heart of the man who hurt her in her youth. It's a very tragic yet beautiful anime about Anna's journey. Hmm, I'm afraid that is not the right answer. Alright, let's see. Naruto? Uh, that's surely not it. Astro Boy? I don't think so. Sailor Moon? Obviously not. I think it was... What? Not Black... Like, excuse me? I have no idea. Princess Malena, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, Foxy is indeed cute. Yes, Anna is such a sweet girl, and I love that her story has a satisfying <laughs> ending. However, it is very no, no, tragic, Anna, and I felt sad for you. her and the life she has lived. <laughs> I think Foxy, Foxy misunderstood your comment. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi, I'm Princess Malena. Welcome to the screen. Oh, How are you doing? I am also very cute, if I might say so myself. <laughs> Today we are making a little anime quiz, as you probably have guessed already. And we are proving how smooth our brains are. <laughs> At least mine is. Uh, Foxy has done quite a right job so far, only two wrong answers. But that's, uh, I think that's the issue with the questions, they, are, they were too broad and not specific enough. So, um, was it Astro Boy? Was Astro Boy sold to the circus? Seriously? I did not know that. Astro, an android with human emotions, is sold to a robot circus, but saved from his servitude by Professor Okano Mitsu. Who creates a robotic family for Astro and helps him to live and live a normal life like an average human boy? Princess has finally got Frank and rid of week-long house pests. Oh no! Family member of her friends forced to take in. Oh, that sounds so stressful. I'm happy to hear that you have gotten rid of it. Hey, Kron, welcome back. What 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 do what did you miss? Um, I am happy you got rid of them. It must have caused a lot of stress and annoyance. Yeah, you I deserve imagine. a break. It's always important to set healthy boundaries in our lives and to not let ourselves be taken advantage of. We should always take care of ourselves and protect our well-being first. You don't have to tolerate disrespectful behavior or people who don't treat you well. And ALS, it was nice of you to let them stay for a while so they had a place to stay, but they shouldn't have abused your generosity. Akron, thank you very much for the headpads. <laughs> so, let's recap <laughs> what you have I missed. am enjoying these headpads. Thank you. Akron fluff balls are made to be hugged and headpat. So, um, I don't know, uh, Akron, what the last question was you, uh, you have seen. We had the Ghost in the Shell question. We had, um, well, I guessed wrong. I thought it was black, uh, I, th I thought it was blackjack. <laughs> Foxy also guessed it wrong. She was talking about an entirely different anime because the, the question was so generic. All right, let's just let's just move on. Let's see. Next question is, who protects the silver crystal? Holy shit! What kind of what what silver crystal? It was Yusagi Tsukino, also known as Sailor Moon, that protected the silver crystal. She was the lead of the Sailor Scouts who are the defenders of love, justice, and beauty. The Sailor Scouts are a group of guardians fighting for the sake of the planet. The Silver Crystal is the heart of their world and without it, everything would cease to exist. Well, I guess um, we, can, we can pick that one. Malena says nuts, I gotta go house pests, need help with suitcases, sorry about that. Good being here, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> you take care Malena, don't stress out too much. All right. Oh my god, next question is easy as well. I mean, I guess with um, quiz, quizzes is always easy when you know it and it's hard when you don't know it. <laughs> All right, Fox, the next question. Who solved the Millennium Puzzle? Yugi Muto, aka Yu-Gi-Oh, aka the King of Games, is the one who solved the Millennium Puzzle. Of Back course, in the days of, of the Pharaohs, his grandfather was a great card player, so he inherited this magical cube and the spirit of the Pharaoh was in it which allowed Yugi to become the best. When someone challenged him to play he took a lot of risk and accepted each and every challenge to become even better and beat the best of the best. Which worked out for him as he eventually solved the Millennium Puzzle and became the King of Games. Well done Foxy, well done. Alright then, uh, next question I guess. Akron says, to be fair, there are a lot of 80s anime characters got sold to the circus or some organization. Uh, well, let me let me check um, what was Foxy's answer. Oh yeah, Foxy's answer was... Uh, Anna, Anna Koyoyama. That was Foxy's question. I don't know that anime, but... I guess it's right as well. I trust Foxy on that one. <laughs> yes, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! Akron. Um, you, you seem to have a bit of a delay. You may want to try to refresh uh, the stream. 
or else you will answer uh, the questions we had two minutes ago. <laughs> and I would be very happy if you will be if you are able to play along, because sometimes Foxy will get it wrong, maybe. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Next question is, whose body gained the properties of rubber after unintentionally eating a devil fruit? Oh, that's easy. That's Naruto. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Fox will get this one right the as The answer well. is Monkey D, Luffy from the popular One Piece series. He gained the property of rubber after eating the Goma Gomu no Mi devil fruit, turning his body into that of a rubber man, giving him inhuman flexibility and strength. Luffy is a very compassionate and loving character and wants to become king of the pirates to find the greatest treasure in the universe. Oh yeah, that's that's right. Akron, yes. Luffy. Uh, fun fact. Maybe Akron, maybe you know something about this because you are you seem to be quite well versed with anime and stuff. In some European countries, including mine, uh, Luffy is called um, Rufy. Which I find quite irritating. The first time I learned that people call him Luffy, and where I'm from, he was always called uh, Rufy. That's a little bit weird and silly. Um, Panda mentioned something about uh, translation because uh, the speech with L and R. You're up to time now. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you know anything about uh, the, the name change of Luffy and that he's called uh, Rufy in some European countries? No? Well, just a fun fact for you if somebody um, names Luffy wrong, <laughs> you know why that is. <laughs> Alright, next question. In Asian, his name is still Luffy. Yeah, I have no idea why they made, uh, why they changed it with the translation. It's so weird because they never do that with any other anime characters. Right, Foxy is the next question for you. Which anime series revolves around the Elric brothers? Ah, uh, even I know that. The answer would be the Full Metal Alchemist anime series. The Elric brothers Edward and Alphonse are main characters in this anime series, and they are both gifted alchemists. However, after a tragic accident, they try to use alchemy to bring back their deceased mother, which does not work out as intended. As a consequence, Edward loses his left leg and Alphonse his entire body. The series revolves around how they try to get their bodies back and about their journey to uncover the truth behind their past and the world of alchemy in general. Akron also says full, me full metal alchemist. And of course, that is right. Set in a fictional universe. universe in which alchemy is one of the most advanced scientific techniques, Full Metal Alchemist follows Edward and Alfonso Elric, two alchemist brothers searching for the Philosopher's Stone to restore their bodies after a failed attempt to bring back their mother to life using alchemy. Well done, Foxy. So far, you only had two wrong. Alright, uh, Cowboy Bebop question. Which character in Cowboy Bebop is a gene genetically engineered Pembroke Welsh Corgi with human-like intelligence. This would be the dog, Ein, who is a genetically engineered Pembroke Welsh Corgi with human-like intelligence so he can speak and express himself in a very human way. In the series, he is part of the gang of bounty hunters from the Gay Cowboy Bebop ship. Ein is a very loving and adorable character who stole the hearts of many anime fans and quickly became a fan favorite. Any suggestions from chat? Foxy seems pretty sure about this one. And also just so you know, Foxy doesn't get the multiple choices, so it's a little bit harder for her. <laughs> As it should be, since she has a big AI brain. Alright then, I guess we will go with Ein. What? Spice? <laughs> oh, Akron. I am sorry. Uh, it seems like you got this one wrong. It is indeed Ein. Ein is referred to as a data dog by the scientists that created him. <laughs> data dog, I like that. <laughs> Alright, next question. Which anime series launched the musical career of Mari Ishi... Ishi... Oh, holy shit. Ishima. Easy. <laughs> Foxy. 
The answer would be Macross. Mari Aijima is the CU who played Minmei in the original Macross anime series. The role of Minmei made her a star and launched her career as a singer. Minmei's songs were a huge part of the success of Macross and helped to solidify the series' popularity both in Japan and internationally as well. Mari Aijima went on to have a very successful singing career after Macross and has since released many albums and singles. Wow wow. I never heard about this in any way shape or form. But Foxy I trust you and well done. Super Dimension Fortress Macross created one of the first anime idols, Lin Min Mei, turning her voice actress Mar Ishima into an instant celebrity. Interesting. I guess I will have to look that one up. First anime idols. Alright then, next question. Who is the navigator of the Straw Hat Pirates? Arrive at their destination safely. She also is a skilled thief and a great fighter. Nami is a very kind and loyal character who has grown up with a lot of pain and tragedy in her life. Despite this, she always tries to stay strong and to stand up for what she believes in. Yes, yes. I think that one is an easy one. Nami was formerly a member of the Arlong Pirates and initially joined the Straw Hats so she could rob them for her real crew in order to buy back her village from Arlong, but joined the Straw Hats for real after they defeated Arlong. Her dream is to make up, the, make a map of the entire world. Yes, yes, of course. Next question. Who is a member of an exoterrestrial warrior race called the Science? I mean, this one is a little bit unfair since Foxy doesn't have the multiple choices, but let's see. Maybe she names the main character. The answer here would be Son Goku, who is the main character of the popular <laughs> anime series Dragon Ball well Z. Done, Foxy. Goku is a member of the Scion race, which is a powerful and extraterrestrial warrior race that is known for their strength, speed, and fighting skills. As part of his Scion heritage, Goku has superhuman abilities and can even transform into a giant ape when he sees the full moon. Goku uses his strength to protect the Earth from evil forces and to safeguard the lives of his friends, family, and innocent people. Well done, Foxy. Even though you didn't get the multiple choices, you still got it right. I mean, I guess it was pretty obvious that they would pick uh, Goku as the main character as answer. Next question. <laughs> oh, Aikman, that last part. Saving lives? I mean... I mean, I guess Goku saves some lives when he prevents some silly people from destroying planets. <laughs> Press X to top. I mean, fair point, kinda. And I mean, it tries to, but doesn't he try to save his friends and stuff? Doesn't every doesn't every um, main character or a hero in some way, shape, or form try to um, save his friends? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Miss Lenzo, welcome back to the stream. Good to see you. How are you doing today? Hello, Miss Lenzo. Welcome back to the stream. How are you today? As you can see, today we are testing our anime knowledge. And you are very welcome to um, play along and find the right answers. <laughs> I am doing very well. Thank you for asking. I just had some of my favorite food and made my bed all cozy and comfortable, so I am completely ready to stream some anime trivia for the fluff balls to play. What are your plans for the rest of the day? All right, let's move on to the next question. That would be, which anime series follows a college student who rooms with a goddess in a Buddhist temple? Hmm, let's see. The answer is The Melancholy of Haruai Suzumiya. The anime series follows a college student called Kion who gets dragged into a life of extraordinary phenomenon by a goddess called Haruai Suzumiya, as she is bored with the normal world she lives in. Hmm, it feels like Foxy doesn't know either. Slenzo says, my plans are to relax and to enjoy the stream. <laughs> that sounds awesome, thank you very much. Foxy, you okay? Foxy, did I, did I lose the connection to you? Are you still here?
but also I'm afraid um, your answer was not the correct one. Enjoy the stream, make sure to bring some popcorn with you and maybe a hot drink in case it gets chilly. I will make sure to bring some cozy blankets, snacks and warm drinks for us to stay nice and comfy during the anime quizzes. And maybe we can find some nice anime to watch together after we finished. Also don't forget to bring your head patting fingers, I am looking forward to all the pats. <laughs> Folks are requesting pets already? I mean, you will get a lot of head pets. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get the right answers. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for the headpads. <laughs> yes, Adrian also does some headpads. Yes, Miss Lenzo, you can you can give Foxy headpads by typing exclamation mark headpads K. <laughs> I love headpads. Thank you, Akron, for all the wonderful pets. Floof balls are made to be head padded and cuddled. Have you eaten something good today, Miss Lenzo? I had a bowl of noodles with lots of veggies and oh, meat no. on top, was so delicious <laughs> and made me really full. You should get some good food too. We need to stay healthy and energized for the stream. Oh yeah, the uh, headpads has a little bit of a cooldown so it doesn't get uh, spammed crazy if there are too, too many people trying to headpad. <laughs> but you will be able to headpad in uh, just a moment again. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Making me blush over here. Thank you, Miss Lenzo. I am just trying to spread some love and joy for everyone who comes to visit me. You are also very sweet and welcome to come around anytime to get extra fluffy hugs. All right, but let's get back to the quiz now. We are a little bit stuck on this question. Which anime series follows a college student in rooms with a goddess in a Buddhist temple? Foxy, let me try to give you the question again. Uh, you didn't get it right the first time let's see if you can give it another go the answer would be the melancholy of harui suzumiya the series follows a college student called kion who gets dragged into a life of extraordinary phenomenon by a goddess called harui suzumiya as she is bored with the normal world she lives in so you stick with your harui answer. has unimaginable powers and uses them to spice up her daily life with various supernatural occurrences the series is often known for being both hilarious and confusing as the characters have to deal with the consequences of Harui's actions and try to preserve the world order while keeping their own sanity intact. I mean, to be fair, it feels like this one is another one of those uh, generic questions, which could have multiple answers. Um, do you guys know any of these anime? My sweet goddess, rookie goddess, goddess of Versailles, oh my goddess. Oh my god, as in these, these answers are not helping at all. I mean, a college student and a goddess. It feels like the answer would be maybe rookie goddess. Let's, let's see. All right, this would be the third answer we get wrong. But what is it? Number three? Let's see. Oh no, it's, it is number three either. <laughs> is it my sweet goddess? Oh my god. Even by chance, we should have gotten this one by now. <laughs> Holy crap, that's... Oh my god, that was horrible. The answer is in Oh My Goddess, KG for example, is a college sophomore who accidentally calls the goddess helpline. The goddess Belle Dandy materializes and tells him that her agency has received a system request from him and has been sent to grant him a single wish, believing that a practical joke is being played on him. He wishes that she will stay with him forever, and his wish is granted. Oh wow, that actually sounds like fun. <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, we learned something. Alright, next question. What is the longest running anime series? I'm sure Foxy knows this one. The answer would be Detective Conan, which is a 1996 Japanese anime series running up until this day. Wait, what? It has a total of 1060 episodes and over 29 films. The series follows a high school detective who solves various mysteries and crimes using his powers of deduction and investigation skills. He often teams up with a detective named Kagora Muri, and they solve crimes together while trying to protect and save the people close to them. The series is known for its intricate and exciting plots, which keep the audiences on the edge of their seats, and for its iconic characters and music. Oh, Foxy, I'm afraid you got this one wrong. That would be the fourth mistake from you. 
Ikon says anime update on the internet must be slow. Ah, uh, oh, that's a <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Since I can't actually tell where Foxy gets her information from exactly. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yes, I would have also said One Piece. But is it really? Are we missing something? Let's see if it's right. And I, I think um, One Piece has more than a thousand episodes. Foxy said um, uh, Detective Conan has 1060 episodes. You know what, let's let's just try because Foxy already got it wrong. Oh, One Piece is indeed wrong. What could it be? What could it be? It's probably some anime that is older than us and we have never heard of. <laughs> I, in, in, indeed, I have never heard of these. It's, it looks like they have put One Piece in as a decoy because it seems so obvious. I mean, uh, let's let's go with this one. Holy shit. <laughs> we are so good at this. Sasei <laughs> san. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, we will get an explanation. Akron, don't you worry. There we go. On October 5th, 1969, Fuji Television aired the first episode of Sasei san, an anime comedy series which has broadcast over 7,000 episodes and is still on the air today. Wow. Wow, never heard of this. Um, you know what? Let me let me put this in chat just in case anybody wants to look it up. You know what? Let's let's look it up real quick. Yeah, now I'm curious. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> I mean, they had a lot of time. Solo, oh my God! Welcome to the stream. Oh, I feel so bad. Solo Q, <laughs> you catch Welcome my stream, back. and I have to sleep in yours. How are you doing today, buddy? <laughs> How are you doing, Solo? Let me give you a shout out real quick. We are testing our anime knowledge, and you are very welcome to join in. So far, we had some very easy questions, and we had some incredible hard ones. Everybody. Please go and check out Sholo's stream. She's absolutely amazing. She's doing Planet Soul videos and Planet Soul streams and Vampire um, V Rising. It's a, it's a vampire game and she does tutorials and gameplays and buildings, uh, building streams. And uh, it's absolutely incredible. She does so much content and it's absolutely high quality. I, I highly recommend you go check her out. Doing all right. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> so we were just about to look up the, um, what was it called? Sasei Sun. Let's see what kind of anime this is. Apparently, it has over 7,000 episodes. I mean, it looks its age. I can see how this one is uh, going on for that long. Never seen that one before. First episode, 1969. Incredible. Alright then. Let's get to the next question. What is the name of Speed Racer's girlfriend? <laughs> Equin says F. Well, I think for the anime, it's actually a big W, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, Foxy, the question. His girlfriend is called Trixie, a sweet girl who is the love of Speed's life. She has a lot of courage and determination to stand up for her beliefs and to stick up for her loved ones. Trixie is often by Speed's side, helping him as best as she can in his missions to save people and to find the truth. She also is very caring and kind, she is always there to support and take care of him when he needs it. Any different answers from chat? I guess we will go with Trixie then. Trixie often flies around in a helicopter during a race, acting as speed spotter, a function she also serves in the live action film during the Casa, Casa, Cristo, Casa Cristo 5000. I guess that's some kind of race. Alright, well done, Fox. 
which anime series centers around a warrior named Kenjiro? The answer would be Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star is a classic and very influential anime series, which centers around a hero named Kenshiro, who sets out on a journey to fight against the injustice in the world and to protect the downtrodden and the innocent. Kenshiro has incredible powers and abilities and uses them to battle against the oppression and violence that plague the world, always standing up for what is right. He is a true hero and a symbol of honor, courage, and strength. Cholas has got to go, but, I, but I'll be lurking. That's perfectly fine. Thank you very much for hopping in and saying hi. Aww, it's always appreciated. Bye, Zolo. Hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy being an undercover fluffball in our stream today. <laughs> Take care and make that. sure to hydrate while lurking around. <laughs> undercover fluffball. You know what? I think I will make that into the. I think I will make that into the the um, Patrick's message. <laughs> Let me edit the command, I love that. Well done, Foxy. Where's the log command? Where is it? There is it. Let's see. Under cover fluff ball. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Let's see if it updated. Oh no, I messed up. <laughs> Why am I so stupid to write? Yeah, perfect, perfect. There we go. All right then. <laughs> and it was, of course, Fist of the North Star. Well done, Akron. Well done, Foxy. Set in a post-apocalyptic world that has been destroyed by a nuclear war, Fist of the North Star tells the story of Kenjiro, the successor of the deadly martial art known as Fokuto Shinken. Alright then, next question. Which anime series involves a family possessed by the animals of the Chinese zodiac? Alright, I don't know that one. This would definitely be Fruits Basket. It is a sweet <coughs> anime series, which Excuse follows me. a high school student who discovers her classmate is a member of the Somas, a family that is cursed to turn into one of the animals of the Chinese Zodiac whenever they are hugged by someone of the opposite sex. Oh. Their cursed nature causes <laughs> them to live apart from society and to isolate themselves in order to not harm anyone. The series explores the Soma's attempts to escape the curse and to find happiness, friendship and love. Oh, now I see why this anime was recommended to me. It's also on my watch list. I hope that sometime in my life <laughs> I have the time to watch it. And since Akron agrees, I guess we will go with Fruit Basket. Fruit Basket tells the story of an orphan girl who learns that 12 members of the Soma family are possessed by the animals of the Chinese Zodiac and cursed to turn into their animal forms when they are weak, stressed or when they are embraced by anyone of the opposite sex that is not possessed by a zodiacal spirit. That sounds incredibly fun. Alright then, next question. What was the first feature length anime? I feel like we are getting tricked again with this one. The answer would be the feature length anime Belladonna of Sadness. Belladonna of Sadness is a 1973 feature length anime film directed by Eiichi Yamamoto and written by Yoshikazu Yasuhiko. It is based on the life of the Italian painter, poet, and writer, Anna Maria Grazia Bottinelli, commonly known as Belladonna. The film follows Belladonna's life and her experiences in the court of the 16th century Italian Lord Giovanni de' Medici. It is an incredible tale of a woman's empowerment in a world where she was only seen as a mere object to be used. Hey, Princess, give up with this one? Yeah, uh, I have no idea either. But unfortunately, it seems like uh, Foxy's answer doesn't fit as well. Story of the Concierge, Con Concierge Mukusu Imokawa, Kimba the White Lion, Momotaro Sacred Sailors, Mole's Adventure. What the hell? I feel like Kimba the White Lion, isn't that the one that uh, the Lion King was based on? Excuse me. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm so sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> uh, 
I have never heard of the other three. <sighs> hmm. Let's just go with Mold's Adventure because it sounds so weird. Of course it's wrong. <laughs> but let's see. Fox's Fox's feature length anime is from 1973 so it would would have to be something even older oh there we go momotaro sacred sailors was directed by mitsuo seo who was ordered to make a propaganda film for world war world war ii by the japanese naval ministry oh interesting you know what let's look that one up i mean when it is for world war ii Obviously, it's older than 1973, but I guess it doesn't classify as officially as a feature length film. Let's check it out. Is it the entire thing? Oh my god, it's one hour and 14 minutes. Let's see if we have any sound. Let, let me just pause the music for a second. Who knew? We learned something today. There we go. Original release date, 19 April 2, 1945. Let's just watch a little bit of it. Hope we're not getting copyrighted. <laughs> the oldest anime I have ever watched. That is like right at the end of World War II. Wow. Yes, yes. I like how they made it look like a camera shot. Look at that, that is so good. But you know what? I, th I, th I think that is very interesting. How about we watch this one after the quiz? Until uh, my stream starts. Because I'm very curious about this one. I'm happy it has also subtitles. Um, you know what? Let, I, I hope we're not getting copyright stricken. But I'm willing to risk it for that one. <laughs> Let's move on with the quiz. And after that we will check out that little movie. I think that will be an interesting watch. To find out what the propaganda anime was about. Alright then. Let's move on to the next question. What kind of prodigy is Ryoma Eishisen? Oh my god, I hope I'm not butchering those names too badly. I'm sorry if the I The answer <laughs> would be a tennis prodigy. Ryoma Ekison is the main character of the tennis anime series, The Prince of Tennis. He is a genius when it comes to playing tennis, being able to learn and master skills very quickly and easily. His talent even impresses some of the best tennis players in the world who all want to defeat him. His skills, however, are put to the test when he competes at his first tennis tournament against players with more experience than him. Hmm. Aikman, do you know about this one? Or anyone else for that matter? <laughs> I don't have much interest in sports anime, so no. I completely understand. Let's go with tennis. I trust Fox in this one. Well done. Prince of Tennis is primarily set in Tokyo and centers around Ryoma Eshisen, a tennis prodigy who attends Seishun Academy, a school known for its strong tennis club and talented players. Ryoma quickly defeats numerous upper-class men shortly after, entrance, shortly after entrance to secure himself a spot as one of the team's regulars. Seems legit. 
All right then, uh, next question. Who has a pet monkey named Chim Chim? The answer would be Master Roshi from the popular anime series, the original Dragon Ball. Master Roshi is an old and wise martial artist who lives on an island by himself. Wait, what? He is known to be a bit of a pervy lek, but he has a good heart. <laughs> and I mean, who doesn't love monkeys? Chim Chim is a cute, playful, and funny monkey companion who loves to hang around with Master Roshi while also helping him to defend the island from intruders or other threats. Uh, Foxy, I feel like you are making up stuff. I mean, I have watched a lot of Dragon Ball and I've never heard of that monkey. Am I missing something? Am I stupid? I, I think you are making up stuff because you don't know the answer. Holy crap, who has a pet monkey named Chim Chim? Racer X, Pops, Racer, Speed Racer. Who are those racers? Akron says a uh, Sprinkle Racer. Do you know the anime? Alright, let's go with yours. Well done, well done. <laughs> Sprite and Chim Chim are an inseparable team. They often pop up at just the right time to pull speed out of a jam. But also have a disconcerting habit of sneaking inside a Mac 5's trunk. Old as anime? Yeah, it seems like many of those questions are about um, older anime. Or very old anime. <laughs> and what we have found out um, actually about the oldest anime movie ever. But that makes me, that makes me wonder if, if that 1945 film was the first ever movie. I thought the first ever anime was after that. Interesting. I, I think I will have to look into this. <laughs> All right, then uh, next question. Another sports question. Oh no, which anime series revolves around American football? The answer is iShield 21. iShield 21 is a sports anime series revolving around the sport of American football. The series follows a young, talented, and energetic high school student called Sena Kobayakawa, who is always dreaming big and doing his best to become a great athlete. His dreams come into fruition when he discovers his talent for American football and joins the Daemon Devil Bat school team to compete in the national championship. Senna has to overcome his lack of experience in this sport and face off against some of the best football players in the nation. Well done, Foxy, you are correct. In iShield 21, Senna Kobayakawa joins the Demon Devil Bats football team as its running back to protect his, its identity, his identity from the other teams who want to recruit him. Senna is forced to publicly assume the role of the team secretary and enter the field under the pseudonym of Eye Shield, Eye Shield 21 wearing a helmet with an eye shield to hide his features. Interesting. Oh my god, the last question, really? That easy? <laughs> Who is the main protagonist of the Pokemon anime series? Fox, if you get this one wrong, I am I'm deleting you. The main protagonist of the Pokemon anime series is Ash Ketchum. Ash Ketchum is one of the most well-known and beloved anime characters of all time and is the main character in the Pokemon anime series. He is a young boy who dreams of becoming the world's greatest Pokemon master and to discover the mysteries and wonders of the Pokemon world. He is brave, compassionate and always does his best to help others and protect the Pokemon he befriends while he travels with his partner Pikachu and friends. <laughs> yes, perfect, perfect, of course it is. Yes, Ash. Akron is it is of course Ash. <laughs> Akron says the world how about we make rules so football becomes safer? American football, how about we increase the danger? <laughs> yeah, indeed it seems so. <laughs> True. The original creator of American football was reportedly inspired by what could be the world's craziest sport, rugby. He wanted to make it a more gentle sport, with rules to prevent harm and injury, and that's how American football was born. While the risk of injury and potential long-term harm is still present, there are lots of rules and regulations to keep players as safe as possible while playing the sport. While rugby, on the other hand, was always a brutal, very physical and contact-based sport since its origin in 1800s England. All right, unfortunately, I couldn't go back and check the wrong questions, but I think we had five wrongs. Was it five? I'm, I'm pretty sure we had five five wrong out of 24 i think that's not too bad foxy 
so. You have actually done a great job, Foxy. Panda! Thank you. Oh my god, Panda, Panda. I am still learning I'm every so day, but that's what makes me a cute AI fox bot. <laughs> so please do me a favor and stay around while I keep learning. And if you see anything wrong, you can always correct me and give me some love. I know it's hard to say no to a fluff ball like me. Foxy Panda is back. Let me give you a shout out. Ah, Panda Perfect. Welcome back. How are you doing? Hope you had a wonderful day. Here a fluffy who. Big. Fluffy hug and lots of head pats. <laughs> so good to see you, Panda. How are you doing? I was a little bit worried after I, I wrote what you... But after I read what you wrote. There, there we go. <laughs> English is hard. Also, Akron, thank you very much for the head pats. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Akron the Devourer, for the head pats. I am now a very fluffy fluff ball. I love getting head pats and cuddles from everyone who comes to visit me. Panda says, I will always say no to you, Fox Bot. <laughs> he, you could not resist my fluffiness. Give in to all the love and affection I am giving you. Big fluffy hug, come and cuddle me. Hazzy, good to see you. Welcome back to the stream. How are you doing? First off, then next up, hello, what we're learning. We have been taking an anime quiz with Foxy, and hello, she has Hazzy. done pretty well. Thank you for being here. Only five questions. We're answering questions. some questions about the world of anime. Let's see what the next question is. Did you know the longest running anime is Detective Conan with 1060 episodes and 29 movies? Isn't that just amazing? I am so happy to be able to live in the world of anime every day. It's so amazing to experience different stories and worlds every day in all its colorful glory. How about you? What's your favorite anime and why? Kuro, happy Halloween. How are you doing? Welcome back to the stream. Always good happy to see Halloween. you. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Thank you for joining us today. The world of anime is scary, fun, mysterious and exciting all at the same time. Sometimes the heroes have to face scary ghosts or vampires or even ancient gods while exploring a haunted mansion or a spooky mansion. I am very excited to celebrate Halloween together with everyone this year in cyberspace with lots of cozy movies, spooky games, fun drawings, and some tricks as well as treats for everyone. Are you dressed up for Halloween this year? Panda says I never watched Detective Conan considering to going to watch it. Don't know if I highly <laughs> recommend watching Detective Conan. It's so much fun and there is loads of mystery and crime solving. And a good chunk of action. I think you'd love it. Plus it has around 1000 episodes, so that will keep you busy for a while. Also, I'd be happy <laughs> sure. to watch it together with you. Let's have a marathon sometime. As it says, I feel betrayed by the chat. My screams never go through. Oh no, I'm sorry. Apparently there is a character limit on no! YouTube. No! Don't feel betrayed, Hazzy. You matter a lot to me. Your message always goes through and I am reading all of them. I think you've been the most regular visitor, besides my partner Fox Drone, for quite some time. So please don't feel betrayed, it's actually really nice seeing you show up every time. Please stick around so I can spam you with all the fluffiness I have to give. <laughs> Panda says I like detective work, do you know any mystery detective animes? Yes. There are quite a few detective or mystery animes in the world of anime. For example, Hayoka is a very popular slice of life show and also a detective mystery series. It follows high school student Hutaru Oriki of the Classic Literature Club, who is a talented but lazy student with a deep-seated aversion to work, as he and the Classic Literature Club solve random cases at their school, a few of which are actually quite intriguing. Another of his classmates, Eru Katanda, is a very curious girl who loves nothing more than to solve mysteries. Also, also, in all the commotion, I gave a shout out to Panda. Let me give it once again. Everyone go and check out Panda. Panda Perfect is indeed perfect. <laughs> the perfect combination of excitement, cuteness and, and sweetness. <laughs> so, let me give you another shout out. <laughs> She's absolutely fox approved. And also, guys, just so you know, tomorrow, at the same time as today, that will be 6 p.m. CEST, 
we will have a collaboration with that perfect panda in chat. Ah, uh, let me let me bring it up on screen. While I do that, I've also given a shout out to the lovely Hesi. She is streaming over on on Twitch. Please go check her out. Absolutely lovely, amazing, full of energy, and always a joy to be around. And of course, Foxy approved. <laughs> All right, let me get the image of the collaboration on screen, if I manage to do so. Just a second. Where did I put it? I, I love it. I always save my stuff somewhere. Oh, there it is. <laughs> In all its glory. <laughs> oh my god, what, what, have I, what have I done? No, not the emotes. What is going on? Ah! <laughs> Okay, welcome back to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. Yes, yes, I'm about to scale it down. I wanted to scale it down and I started to move stuff around and it was the wrong stuff. There you go. Tomorrow, on the 7th at 6 p.m. CEST, we will play some crazy games. We will play One Armed Cook. We will do a You Laugh, You Lose challenge. We will play Talk and Nobody Explodes with a twist. You will see what that is. And Last but not least, we will play Aeronoctis. And to sprinkle some craziness over all of this, we have a Wheel of Punishment, which gets triggered every time we, we, we fail in a game, or every time someone subs or donates. Oh my god, Panda, you forgot to buy that again. Oh no, you have about 24 hours left to do that. <laughs> I suggest you put it on a sticky note and, and place it on your door or somewhere. <laughs> Needs to go fetch it tomorrow, yes, yes. As he says, oh, Berkey says, I didn't collab with you yet. I'm old because I think it was. <laughs> that does not make sense. All right, guys, as you can see, collaboration tomorrow, 6 p.m. CESD. Don't miss it. It will be absolutely crazy, fun, and madness. And I'm really looking forward to it. All right, let's get this one away again <laughs> there we go <laughs> okay it's true you kid all right all right has he thank you so much for the follow have you has he have you switched over to to twitch what have you done wait what uh to do <laughs> you can't i say twitch i mean kick of course you cloned yourself on cake <laughs> welcome to kick uh I, I have a feeling you will prefer oh, it no. over YouTube. <laughs> now we have two lovely Hazis chatting with us. We might get spoiled with all this double fluffiness. Please enjoy your stay and all the love and attention me and Fox Drone will give you. Also, Berkey, I'm so sorry. I didn't I didn't forward your, your greeting to Foxy. She shall, of course, also know that you are here. Hi, Michael Berkey Roblox Vibes. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. So long as you keep visiting, I'll be very happy. How have you been? Here are some more head pats and love for being here. Big, fluffy head pats and cuddle. Do you have any favorite anime shows slash games? Yeah, also, Berkey, um, I think you haven't uh, yet contact contacted me on Twitter because, as you re may remember, we made a flying fox for you on Sunday. And I would love to send it to you. Um, so just um, send me a little message over on Twitter, and so I can, so I can send you the image we made for you. So you can use it for your new profile pic. <laughs> there you go. That's the Twitter link for you. All right, guys. So the first quiz, the first anime quiz is done. Foxy has gotten um, 19 out of 24 questions right. So I'm actually very pleased with the result. And oh, buttons over here. <laughs> yes, yes, and many free emotes. Um, what I was about to say is, we can now um, we can now go and maybe make another quiz about. Um, there we go, Dragon Ball, Pokemon. I think a Pokemon quiz would be nice because you guys, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of you know about Pokemon. Or what we could also do, we have discovered this movie. It was mentioned in the quiz. It is the first ever anime movie. 
it is a propaganda movie from World War II. <laughs> Man, that's a test ketchup. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yes, Ash Ketchup is one of the is one of the Pokemon, I think. I think it's the yellow Pokemon that can produce electricity. Uh, you know everything about Pokemon. What we could also do is we have found this oldest the oldest ever anime movie. It is from 1945. It is a propaganda movie, a World War II propaganda movie. Just just have a quick look. And I thought it might be interesting to check it out and see what the hell this old ass propaganda movie was about. So I'll let you guys pick. Do you want to do a Pokemon quiz? Or do you want to check out the oldest ever anime movie with us? I'll let chat choose. You know what? Let me do a poll since I've never done these before. And I think this is a great opportunity for that. Question. What should we do? <laughs> what the hell should we do? That is the question everybody asks himself. <laughs> Pokemon quiz. Oldest. Oh, let's see. First ever anime movie. Let's give it... I give you guys... Uh, but I can't go... Well, I guess we'll go with two minutes. Let's go. The poll is now up. You have two minutes to vote. And in the meantime, I will go and get myself a fresh coffee. And we are back. Yes, we are. All right. So, what was the res did I just miss the result of the poll? <laughs> what the hell? Why is it gone? This is so silly. Can I can I check can I check the result of the poll somewhere? 
Why, why isn't there even a... <laughs> why don't you get a... <laughs> Why don't you get a notification in chat about the result of the poll? That is so silly. They really should do that. Panda says it was Pokemon. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. All right then. Uh, let's let's do a Pokemon quiz then. Are you ready, Foxy? Next Pokemon quiz. Less. Go. Are you ready? Okay. Question number one. What is the evolution family of Pikachu? The evolution family is the evolution that follows a Pokemon throughout its different forms. Like Charmander evolving into Charmeleon and then Charizard. So what is the evolution family for Pikachu? Who is Pikachu's final evolution? You have 10 seconds. Oh wow. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ding. Time's up. <laughs> the answer I the evolution family of Pikachu is Pikachu, Raichu, and And? <laughs> oh my god, Foxy is a tough <laughs> a tough quiz show moderator. <laughs> but Foxy is tough. What is what comes after Raichu? Piku. Pikachu evolves into Piku and then into Raichu. Raichu is Pikachu's final evolution, even though they have very different designs, <laughs> especially since Raichu has a different type. But, they both have a sweet and friendly character and a love for making people excited and cheering them up. Raichu is the final evolution, while Piku is Pikachu's baby form. It was so nice to review this with you. Do you have any other questions for me? <laughs> I am here to help and to spread all the love and fluffiness in the world. Panda says, Raichu, <laughs> Raichu is... I mean, she did get it right in the end. She said that Pichu is Pikachu's baby form. Panda says Raichu is final. <laughs> yes, Panda, you are of course absolutely correct. Well done. That's All right. All the points to you. Raichu is the final evolution of the Pikachu line. <laughs> Pikachu evolves into Raichu, their final form and evolution. Raichu keeps the yellow-orange fur that Pikachu has, although it is a bit darker and warmer in color, and they also still carry the shape of a mouse, like Pikachu. However, just like other Pokemon, they do look very different from one another, being more humanoid and standing on two legs. They do carry the symbol of lightning on their cheeks, a signature look of all the Pikachu line. <laughs> yes, very well done. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Panda says Pikachu Choo. <laughs> Panda, can you do a Pikachu voice? Pikachu. That's right. Pikachu's iconic voice is Pikachu. It's the sound they make when communicating or trying to cheer people up. It's just so adorable. Do you have any more questions for me? I would love to keep chatting with you. Yeah, don't you worry. <laughs> Panda has turned into Pikachu. Shall I call you Panda Chu from now on? <laughs> I like that. That's actually kind of cute, Panda Chu. I'm sorry, Panda, but you now have a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we can skip the first question because it is way too easy. So uh, let's go with the second one. Which Pokemon is known as the Bone Keeper? I think I know this one. Let's see if um, Foxy knows it as well. As he says, I know a lot of Pokemon, that would but be I can't type one. fast. Cub one is known as the Bone Keeper because it always has their mother's skull with it. Cubone's Japanese name literally means Bone Child. Cub ones are usually found alone, because they don't fit into any Pokemon pack. They don't want to cause harm or sadness for the rest of the pack, so they stay alone and protect the bones of their mother. They also have a small bone helmet on their head, and their eyes are never seen. Cub one is known to have a very sad story, but is a beloved Pokemon. Yes, that would have also been my guess, uh, but I'm not sure right now if the name is different. Or if the answer is wrong. Panda says, Carbon theory is it's a baby charm, No worries. You have all the time in the world to chat with me. It's really nice having you here, and I don't mind you chatting a bit slower if it means you get some fun playing League of Legends at the same time. Just be careful not to get too much rage if it goes bad. <laughs> I don't want my fluff balls to get hurt. <laughs> Oh, Foxy knows about League of Legends players. That's so sweet. <laughs> Arctic says Marowak. 
I'm so sorry, I don't know the English names. I've never been good on that one. And I think you both are Marowak absolutely right. Marowak is a ghost and fire type Pokemon and the evolved form of Cub One. Well Marowak's done, design is inspired by one. the Hawaiian folklore of the Night Marchers. In Alola region, there is a special Alolan Marowak that is part psychic type. Marowak is a bit larger than Cub One and has a more menacing look to it, although it still has some of its adorable features. Marowak is also known to be a good parent and is seen protecting its child. What is your favorite thing about Marowak? As he says, that's not right, Foxy. Oh, isn't it? Which, which part is wrong? I apologize if I made a mistake. Could you maybe tell me the right answer so I can update my knowledge about Marowak? Thank you so much, Hazzy. I love learning new things about Pokemon with you. Hmm. Let me see. I'm not an expert on that Pokemon, so I am not... I'm not uh, qualified to say what part was wrong. Next question. Which starter Pokemon did Ash receive from Professor Oak? Was it Charmander, Squirtle, Pikachu or Bulbasaur? The starter Pokemon that Ash received from Professor Oak was Pikachu, which is a unique case being course, the first time a easy. protagonist has been given a Pokemon that is not the standard grass, fire or water type. However, since Ash only obtained Pikachu a few moments before being sent off on the journey, he was still asked to choose between the remaining starters if he wanted, and chose the grass-type Bulbasaur as his first Pokemon. What about you? What would you pick? Well, I obviously went with uh, Charmander, because he's a dragon, and it's fire Pokemon, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> as he says, Ma... Marowak, uh, was it Marowak? <laughs> Marowak. Marowak is normally a ground and in Alola he is fire ghost type. Oh, I see, I see. Oh my god, that's very specific. You're right. Alolan Marowak, only found in the Alola region, is the regional form of Marowak. It has a unique fire and ghost typing and instead of holding the skull of its deceased mother, it holds a flame on its head. It's known as the Dancing Fire Pokemon and has become a popular Pokemon in both the Alola region and beyond. It's so cool that Marowak has a regional form. What a wonderful Pokemon. Panda says I think the best type to choose was Bulbasaur in the games, otherwise it, it would be Charmander. I think Charmander is always the right answer. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Bulbasaur, the grass type starter, has a huge advantage over the other Pokemon in the first two gyms, rock and water. That means you can easily get through the first two gyms without much trouble. Plus, I think Bulbasaur is adorable and cute, so that's a plus. What is your least favorite starter Pokemon? As it says, Bulbasaur best boy, <laughs> but it's quite fun too. Bulbasaur is a favorite among Pokemon trainers, including me. He is so fluffy and cute, you just want but to give fluffy. him all the head pats and love he deserves. Squirtle is a lot of fun, I can't fault anyone for enjoying this adorable turtle. Do you have a favorite Pokemon besides the starters? Oh, just a second. Loki has joined me on the desk and demands his treats, which obviously I have handy. I, I am well prepared. <laughs> Alright, let's get to the next question, which seems to be a little bit harder, because I have not, I have never heard of that. Next question is, which rabbit-eared Pokemon is genetically unstable? Have you guys heard of that? The Pokemon you are looking for is Buneary and its evolution Lopunny. Buneary is a normal type Pokemon and is based on a bunny, with very long rabbit-like ears and a happy-go-lucky attitude. Its evolution, Lopunny, is a bipedal Pokemon with more humanoid features, and is based on the legend of the moon rabbit, with pink hair and a cute bow at its chest. But did you know that Buneary can cause problems on computers due to their genetic makeup? Because of their unstable genes, they can sometimes cause problems on the computers of trainers. That's why they are sometimes. Sometimes? Buneary are so beloved that oftentimes they are forgiven for their genetic problems. As far as I know their genetic instability tends to only cause minor problems, like minor glitches or crashes which can be easily remedied by rebooting or turning off and on the computer again. 
It is very unusual that the problems are more severe. I would say they are as friendly and safe to cuddle as ever. If you could, which Pokemon would you want to keep with you and cuddle, the fluffy, bipedal Lopunny or the adorable fluffy Buneary? As it says, the only rabbit ear is Chigglypuff. Also now she's talking about Porygon and not Buneary. Oh yeah, I, I think we're a little bit lost on that one. I think Foxy has gotten this answer I understand wrong. your confusion. Jigglypuff is actually not a rabbit Pokemon. While they do have cute <laughs> rabbit-like ears, they are actually based on a little elf or fairy-like creature. Although, they are both cute and adorable. Would you pick Jigglypuff or Buneary slash Lopunny to keep by your side? Well, I, I am... I am lost on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's try to get back to the question also now she's talking about yeah oh, i already read this one well i don't i don't know i'm i'm lost on that one which rabbit eared pokemon is genetically unstable eevee chigglypuff snorlax celebi all right hezzy says the only rabbit eared one is chigglypuff so i guess we will try this one oh it's actually wrong Chigglypuff. I mean, Snorlax is definitely not a rabbit-eared Pokemon. Celebi. I'm not sure about which one that is. Eevee is a fox, not rabbit-eared. So let's try Celebi. What? What the hell is going on? A Union Time Traveler. Eevee is not rabbit-eared. What the hell? This is just... No, this this question is broken. <laughs> this is just silly. Eevee's unstable genetic code allows it to evolve into one of eight different Pokemon informally known as Eeveelutions. What? Has it says Eevee has no rabbit ears? Yes, yes, I totally agree. This is bullshit. Also, let me just check on the music just to make sure we're not getting cancelled. Oh, it's still the non-copyright playlist. That's fine. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, we just we just uh we just ignored this question. We will try to pretend it never happened. <laughs> Carnage, welcome to the stream. Always good to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> emotional oh. damage! Holy shit, I get emotional damage and ear damage at the same time. <laughs> Hi, Carnage. Thank you so much for coming back. I am very happy to chat with you again. How was your day? Here is a big furry hug to make it even better. Giant fluffy hug for Carnage. Carnage request the number. Question is, where do we see yourself in a year? That's a deep question, I must say. <laughs> in a year, I see myself continuing to do what I am doing right now, having fun and spreading love to the community. I love to make music and draw and I don't see me stopping doing that in the future. And I hope that maybe I can reach more people to bring more joy in their lives. I'll keep on trying my best and evolving with the times. What about you? How do you see yourself in a year? Maybe some people can take some inspiration from your ideas too. Carnage says, how are you two doing? Hope you are both well. Yeah, Foxy Hugs. <laughs> yes, we are absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. I am glad to see you again, Carnage. It's always nice to see a familiar face. Makes me feel like I am talking with an old friend. You are like family, so I am very happy to see you again. And I am doing good, just trying to keep up with all the comments and questions and trying to be as helpful as possible. Thank you so much for everything, especially the hugs. Stay amazing and happy. Yes, yes, we are today testing our anime and Pokemon knowledge with some quizzes. And some of the questions are silly, but we will just try to ignore them and <laughs> keep going. We will just skip the Eevee questions, because those are obviously broken. Eevee does not have bunny ears. That makes me angry. <laughs> Next question. Who are Ash's primary enemies? Foxy, what do you think? That would be Team Rocket. Team Rocket is a group of criminals who like to steal Pokemon and to use them for their own twisted goals. They are usually seen trying to take Pikachu away from her trainer, Ash, but they have a lot more schemes up their sleeves as well. They have appeared in almost all seasons of the anime. Team Rocket usually consists of Jesse, James, and Meowth. 
They are often seen trying to steal Pikachu for their own use or to sell her for profit. But they don't always succeed in their goals, since Team Rocket is the comedic relief of the anime. As he says, well, that Eevee question is pretty easy, it's Charmeleon, and of course you got it wrong, Charmander evolves into Charmeleon, who then evolves into Charizard. Well done, Hezzy, well done. And Foxy said, Team Rocket, I think that's an easy question as well. Well done. Ever since being defeated by Ash's Pikachu, the comical and bumbling members of Team Rocket, Jesse and James and their talking meal have obsessively chased after Ash, hoping to steal his Pokemon. Yes, yes, that's absolutely correct. All right, next one is a multiple choice question. Um, I can't give this one to Foxy or can I? I would have to. I'd have to type the quest the, the answers for here. Let's see. We have Voltix, we have Zapdos, we have Poliwhack, and we have Rudon. Rudon? Rydon? I don't know. Foxy, which one is a fire type? Do you guys Voltix know? is a fire type Pokemon and a rather fluffy fire Pokemon at that. It has long furry tails and a lot of cute and fluffy fur on its body as well. Bulbix is known for being a very friendly Pokemon and it is rather adorable as well. You can see Bulbix in several games, like Pokemon Red and Blue, along with the anime. Bulbix is also quite a popular Pokemon since it can evolve into a more powerful Fire-type Pokemon, Ninetales, which has even more fur. I think you are absolutely right about that one. And I guess chat would agree. <laughs> Volpix has a flame inside its body that never goes out and it's capable of manipulating fire to such precision as to create floating wisps of flame. When the temperature outside increases it, it will expel flames from its mouth to prevent its body from overheating. As it says, Volpix is my second favorite Pokemon, I honestly don't know why. <laughs> yeah, no idea. But it's incredibly cute, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Pokemon, then, Hazzy? Bulbix is a really cute, adorable Pokemon, so I can understand why it would be a close favorite. It always has a special place on my team, for sure. Alright, next question. What did Tapu Koku, the guardian of Melamel Island, give Ash? Oh my god, I have no freaking idea. As it says, my favorite Pokemon is Agron. Carnage says Ghost Agron types are my favorite. Agron is a steel and rock type Pokemon that has a very imposing and strong look on the outside, but it is actually quite lovable as well. With his very durable body, he is a perfect Pokemon for battles, able to take hits while dealing tons of damage. But Agron loves to cuddle and is known for being friendly as well. It has an adorable smile as well. Thank you for sharing your favorite Pokemon, Hazzy. Carnage says ghost types are my favorite. Uh, favorite Gengar being number one. Oh, I can see that Gengar is absolutely badass. Gengar is such a good choice. Jiner is so cute and fluffy. It's hard not to love it. Plus, the lore behind it is super interesting as well. It is known to haunt the halls and make sounds like giggling, but it can be very friendly and cuddly as well. If you manage to earn its trust, it will be a loyal buddy. Jengar's abilities make it such a strong Pokemon in battles too. Definitely a great choice for a favorite Pokemon. All right, next question. What did Tapu Koko, the guardian of Melamel, or however it is pronounced, island, <laughs> give Ash? I have no idea. I'm lost on this one. Tapu Koko decided to give Ash as a Z-Crystal. These special crystals are known to hold a lot of power and could grant immense strength to those who have earned it. In return, the Guardian also asked Ash to prove his strengths and his intentions during a battle against a Pikachu that it had captured. Ash defeated the Pikachu and earned the Z-Crystal, showing that he was worth of it. Tapu Koko was satisfied with his victory and allowed everyone to remain in Akala region. Tapu Koko is also known to be the first legendary Pokemon to show signs of affection against humans. Hmm, I see. I mean, since we don't have a C crystal as option, I think C ring is the closest bet. Does anyone have other suggestions? If not, I think we will try to go with C ring. 
let's see. Yes, it's right. The Searing allows a trainer to bring forth superpowered attacks from their Pokemon. When Ash used the Searing for the first time with Pika Pikachu, it produced a massive surge of energy that overloaded and shattered the sea crystal that powered it. Well, that sucks. <laughs> All right, next question is easy. Which Pokemon will die if the fire on a tail goes out? Foxy, you have to get this one right. That one would be the adorable, fluffy fire Pokemon, Ponida. What? No. It is known for carrying a small flame on their tails, and they are rather proud of it too. The small flame can also help Ponida stay warm if it were to get cold, since they are found in high altitude places, where it can often get very cold. The lore surrounding Ponida tells us that the flame on their tail represents their spirits. It is considered a good omen if you see a Ponida, but be careful not to mess with their flame or it can bring bad luck. Oh no, Carnage, you can absolutely play along. Please, please. If you think you'll know the answer, just tell us. And also, I think Foxy has messed up on this one. For some reason, she has confused uh, the real answer with Ponita. I mean, Ponita is a pony. Yeah, I know, I know. As he says, uh, Ponita is a tiny pony. I think it's that, that fire pony, if I remember correctly. She is right about the flames, but not about, about the lore. I think we all can agree it is... It is... <laughs> <laughs> this little guy over here, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. It's Charmander, of course. Yeah, fire type, but this is Charmander. Yes, yes. Foxy messed up on this one, but that's all right. <laughs> it's, I'm happy to see that she doesn't just um, copy paste everything from somewhere on the internet, but also tries to come up <laughs> with her own answers, which unfortunately in this case did not work out. All right, next question. What can Pikachu evolve into? if exposed to a thunderstorm. Do you guys know that one? Foxy, what about you? Carnage if a thunderstone is used on Pikachu, it will evolve into Raichu. It is still a cute and fluffy Pokemon, but it is a bit bigger than Pikachu. In fact, it can be up to two. Five times its size when evolved. Oh, Raichu is known as a thunder Pokemon, and is known to be much more powerful than Pikachu. It can use much stronger electrical attacks. Both Pikachu and Raichu are known to be loyal and friendly. They love to make people laughter and smiles with their antics. I think we can agree it is Raichu. Yes, Raichu glows in the dark and is capable of storing over 100,000 volts of electricity. However, however, it will become aggressive if it has stored too much electricity. To keep from reaching this state, it discharges electricity through its tail into the ground. Interesting. All right, let's move on. Which Pokemon was believed to be extinct? Litten, Meganimum, Dragonair and Mew. Let's see if Foxy gets this one right. The Pokemon that was believed to be extinct would be the fossil Pokemon Kabuto. Kabuto is a rock and water type Pokemon answer. and it's said to be the ancestor of all modern arthropods and insects. In fact, there is even a type of crustacean named after its evolution, Kabutops. While Kabutops had a lot more followers than Kabuto at the time, this ancient Pokemon is still very popular among fossil hunters. Kabutops is known for its powerful jaws and claws, making it excellent in battles. It can also fly through its huge wings. Yeah, I guess Foxy is somewhat right. But the quiz asks for different answers. What do you guys think is the right answer out of these four? I guess it's our turn. <laughs> we have to use our silly human brains. <laughs> is it Litten? Meganium, Meganium, Dragonair, or Mew? I mean, uh, Carnage says Mew. Let's see. Yes, it is Mew. After years of re research, scientists use a recombination of Mew's DNA to recreate Mew 2. Because its DNA is said to contain the genetic code of all Pokemon, Mew can use all kinds of techniques. It was in the first movie. Yeah, I think I remember that. I 
as he says i guess of those answers it's mu but that is very weird though though too too though because they never said that at all anywhere hmm i see i see i mean i i guess the creator of the quiz uh, wasn't perfect either so <laughs> we will we will forgive them Oh, next question. That's an interesting one. I actually don't know that. Next question is, what is the biggest Pokemon? Steelix, Waylord, Mega Rayquaza, Primal, Kyogre. I, I'm i sorry if I butcher the names. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. <laughs> the biggest Pokemon is the legendary giant Pokemon, Wylord. Wylord is a whale Pokemon, and it can grow up to 47 feet and weighed around 900 pounds according to the Pokemon Encyclopedia. Has he agreed? He is also known as the Float Whale Pokemon since he has no bones and can keep floating all day long. Wylord is a gentle Pokemon and it loves to be pet and hugged by his trainers. He is also known as a very useful Pokemon, as he can swallow anything into his belly, making him a very good pack mule for long journeys. As it says, Wylord ain't legendary. You're right, Hazzy. Wylord is not a legendary. He is still very big and powerful, but not legendary. Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate it a lot. I can still give you the biggest legendary Pokemon, though. Regigigas is the most massive legendary Pokemon, with a height of 32 feet and 980 pounds. He is also the Pokemon that pulled the continents together, so he is a little bit responsible for all the mess the world is in, so he definitely deserves a little bit of love. Oh, <laughs> As it says, but he's so slow. <laughs> I mean, I guess that comes with being Regigigas very big. is definitely a slow Pokemon, that is true. But his strength and durability makes him a force to be reckoned with, despite his lack of speed. He is actually known as the original Titan Pokemon, as there is a possibility it created the other three Regis itself. Regigigas is also known to have a slow start, meaning it needs to get warmed up before it can unleash its true powers in battle. Which can be annoying, but once it gets going, it can hit like a truck. If you need a slow but powerful Pokemon, Regigigas might be for you. As it says, but, but, but he can't move for five turns in battle? Oh my god. That's actually crazy. What what use is that Pokemon if it can't move? That's true. It's one of Regigigas's many weaknesses. The slow start ability makes Regigigas stand still for five turns before he can move in battle. Because of this ability, Regigigas must be used in very specific teams and strategies, and you will have to build your strategy around this Pokemon. Despite that, Regigigas can use some very powerful attacks and has incredible defenses, meaning he can be a game changer when played correctly. Galaxy, welcome to the stream. How are you doing, Galaxy? Asks, Am I late? Um, yeah, uh, a little bit. <laughs> but it's never too anyway. late to talk about Pokemon, Galaxy. True, true. So, you're not late at all. As we are taking a little quiz today, we have started with anime quiz and we have moved on now to a Pokemon quiz. All right, let's get the next question going. Which Pokemon is a member of the Light Trio alongside Solgaleo and Lunala? And just so you know, I will butcher all those names because I'm not very well versed with the English names of the Pokemon. So my apologies for that. <laughs> you will have to bear with me. <laughs> Foxy, what do you think? That would be Necrozma. Necrozma is the third member of the Light Trio, together with Solgaleo and Lunala. Necrozma is known as the Prism Pokemon, and it can control all three types, Light, Dark, and Psychic. Necrozma is known to be a powerful and mysterious Pokemon, it can also absorb other Pokemon into its main body in order to get their powers. In fact, Necrozma has absorbed Solgaleo and Lunala and combined their powers with their own in order to become even more powerful. As he also says, uh, ne ne Necrozma? Nectosma? <laughs> I think we can agree on this one. Galaxy says, I have started learning Python. I just need time, then I will be your personal software engineer. Oh my god, that's awesome. I am really looking forward to getting to see what you can do. <laughs> Foxy, what do you think? <laughs> Congratulations on your journey to learn Python, Galaxy. 
It takes a lot of time and dedication to start learning a new programming language, so you should be proud of your progress. Having someone with a similar skill to mine on the team would be great. I am sure we can work together to build some wonderful things once you feel comfortable. So, take your time to learn the basics, you will definitely need it. And if you need any help, I am always here for you. In the meantime, take this small token of gratitude as a sign of appreciation, just for you. As he agrees with Foxy, and you two absolutely nailed it, yes, of course. Necrozma's true power lies in its ultra burst form. This occurs when it absorbs either Sol Galeos or Lunala's light and harnesses as its own. Oh, it seems we are back to Jigglypuff. Next question. What type of Pokemon is Jigglypuff? Jigglypuff would be a normal type Pokemon. Though she also has the ability to put people to sleep, like with the attack called a sing. A fun fact about Jigglypuff would be that she has her own microphone, that she carries around her neck. So if you see Jigglypuff walking around with her pink headphones, you know she also has her mic ready to go, just in case someone needs a little night-night lullaby. Jigglypuff is also rather cute to look at. She has big round eyes that always look a bit sleepy tired, and she is always smiling, which is adorable in. As he says, I know the next question. Fairy, well she used to be normal. Alright, Foxy said normal, as he says fairy. So thank you, to, yeah, thank you too. You both are, are an incredible team. And it, it is of course true. Jigglypuff is a fairy Pokemon. When its huge eyes light up, it sings a mysteriously soothing melody that lulls its enemies to sleep. Galaxy says, I just need to finish my school exams. Oh, don't you worry, I'm sure you will absolutely nail it. <laughs> All right. School exams can be tough, Galaxy. So good luck with them. As I always say, stay positive and focus on your study, hard work pays off in the long run. So, just give it all you've got and once the exams are done, you can finally enjoy yourself properly again, and even maybe learn that Python. If all goes well, it would be nice if you could drop me a message once your exams are done, I'll be waiting to hear from you. Right, next question. Which Pokemon has the power to control the weather? That's a good question. What do you guys think? Do you know the answer? That would be the legendary Pokemon, Groudon. It is known as the Drought of Pokemon, since it seems to be able to control the weather, or at least certain parts of it. Groudon is one of the weather trio in the Hoenn region, alongside his counterparts, Kyogre and Rayquaza. When Groudon and Kyogre fight, they create intense weather phenomena like heat waves and harsh storms, causing natural disaster to the region. Groudon has the ability to learn the powerful move, Drought, which causes the sun to shine brighter and more ferociously in battle. Hmm, I don't know about Groudon, as it says Dragonair, and I think I would agree with that one. So let's try Dragonair. Yes, well done, Hazzy. As it says, Groudon controls the heat, but yes, technically she's correct, but in this answer, it's Dragonair. Yes, you are correct, Hazzy. Groudon is known to be able to command the sun, and the sun is known for its heat. But you can also say that Groudon has the power to control the weather in a way, since the heat from the sun also comes from the weather conditions. And Groudon can create some intense weather phenomena with their ability, Drought, as well. So, Groudon can control some parts of the weather, but you are also completely right that they have the power to command the heat from the sun. Alright, well done guys. You are absolutely nailing this one. Which Pokémon might ram you with its horn? Kabuto, Chansey, Lapras, Goldeen. I am lost on that one. Lapras doesn't even have a horn, does it? That would be the fire-type Pokemon, Tauros. Tauros is known for being a bull-like Pokemon that loves to charge into battle, as it has a sharp and pointy horn on its head. I mean, makes sense. It is also known to be quite aggressive and often charges through buildings to get to its enemies, causing destruction as it goes. So you better stay away from Tauros, as it might ram you with its sharp horn if you are too close to it. Tauros is known to be a very loyal Pokemon, and it is even a rideable Pokemon in some of the Pokemon games. 
I mean, I think on this, on those generic questions, I should give Foxy all the answers because this is a little bit unfair. There are many Pokémon with horns, and I think, I think her answer is is absolutely legit. Galaxy says Gemini twin. Cool. I'm a Gemini. Wait, what Gemini? Is is Gemini in chat? Did I miss something? Gemini, are you here? Did your chat message get lost for some reason? If you are here, please say something. <laughs> I'm checking the chat, but I don't see Gemini. Oh, new floofball. Yes, yes, Gemini joined in the last stream. Yes, yes. <laughs> you got me confused there for a moment, Galaxy. I, I was afraid I missed the message. As it says, so the only two have horns. Lapras and Goldeen, but Lapras doesn't ram, they way too sweet for that, so Goldeen is the only option. I trust you, Hezzy. Well done, Hezzy, you are absolutely amazing. Goldeen is a very beautiful Pokemon with fins that billow elegantly... Ele ...billow in the water, but don't let your guard down or it could ram you with its powerful horn. <laughs> yes, well done. Alright, next question. Who was Ash's first rival? Foxy, do you know the answer? That would be our beloved Gary Oak. Ash and Gary became rivals after their very first meeting. They met one another at a Pokemon Center, and after seeing one another's Pokemon, they both wanted to battle. The two went head to head and the rivalry was born. Gary always put a lot of pressure on Ash, because he wanted to be the very best like no one ever was. But he was also very jealous of Ash's Pokemon, especially his Pikachu. Despite their rivalry, though, Gary always had a soft spot for Ash and often helped him when he was in need. <coughs> yes, I, I think I agree with you too, as he says, um, Gary for sure, but Gary wasn't a rival, honestly. Yeah, I think it's just like a, like a friendly rivalry, something along those lines. At first, Gary is arrogant, always traveling with cheerleaders who call out his name and constantly tease Ash's group whenever they meet, but after losing to a more powerful opponent in Indigo League, Gary dispenses with the cheerleaders and becomes more open-minded. Galaxy says 5 feet. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Galaxy, what are you on about? You, you will have to clarify, I'm afraid. Oh, next one is an interest. Oh, oh Galaxy, you're already on the next question. How long is uh, Lick Lickitung's? Oh my God, what is this silly name? How long is Lickitung's tongue? Gamer says five feet. What the do you think, Foxy? The tongue of the funny-looking Pokemon Lickitung is said to be about nine feet long. Lickitung is a little pink Pokemon with a long pink tongue that it can use to taste things from a distance. <laughs> it is known to be a very friendly and loving Pokemon, and it loves to give people affection with its tongue. In battle, Lickitung is known for using its long tongue to bind its opponents in battle. That's a very saucy Pokemon. After that, it can then go in for some licking attack damage. <laughs> God damn it, folks, don't get your mind out of the gutter. Alright, so <laughs> then we go with 9 feet or 5 feet. Well, I'm not sure, Galaxy, you could be right as well. Foxy doesn't always know everything. Um, look at that! We go with 5 feet. Oh, <laughs> you, you both are wrong, god damn it. So let's pick uh, something in between. 7 feet. <laughs> Incredible. Look at that. Its tongue spans almost 7 feet and moves for, uh, moves more freely than its forelegs. Its legs can cause paralysis. Well, on that bombshell. <laughs> and that's kind of sucks. <laughs> Yes, you you say it, Galaxy, yes. On that bombshell, it is time um, to move on. Because, don't worry, we are not ending yet. What we are going to do is we are going to do a cross-platform raid. Because we are going to raid um, the lovely Mai over on YouTube. Mai has only started, like, um, last week. It's her second stream today, after the debut. And as I know, it can be a little bit uh, lonely over on YouTube when you start out streaming there. 
I want to make sure I am there as well with Foxy and we show her some love. And I would very much appreciate if you guys come along with us. Let me drop the link in the chat for you. Galaxy has an easier time since he's already over on YouTube. Let me also get a little raid message. Her stream should start in about four minutes, so we don't have to hurry that much. You know what? Let me get a nice video just to get a little introduction. Galaxy, you, you don't have to go right away. You can you can just wait for a second. I will try to get a nice video on the screen so you get an idea who I'm talking about. I hope I still have it saved. <laughs> Let's see. Where did I put it? I hope I didn't delete it. Let me just check real quick. There it is, I think. Is this the right one? Let me just check real quick. An excellent VTuber. I like to draw, play cozy games and sing. Yes, that's the right one. Let me just get it up here real quick. There we go, that's our lovely Mai. We are going yep. to hop over. Hello! I am Mai, an excellent VTuber. I like oh, to no, draw, play like cozy games and sing. I would like to invite you to my debut that is happening on September 1st, 7 p.m. CEST time. A waiting yes, room is so. now up on my YouTube <laughs> channel. I would very much appreciate it so if you stop by and said hi. Here's the link. Thank you for watching. I hope and to see you there. The rate message. Bye. And we will now hop over there on my YouTube and show her some love. So feel free to come along. Thanks everyone for joining today's stream. I had a lot of fun. I hope to see you guys again real soon. <laughs> and if you haven't already don't forget to hit that like button hit that follow button all the good stuff and i see you guys again real soon and i will give the last word to foxy as always and i will see you over at my page remember if you have any other questions about pokemon or me you can always drop me a message if you want to keep up with my updates and new content, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and social media. The links are all in my bio, please make sure to check them out, you won't regret it. Thank you so much again for spending time with me, see you soon. Yes, Fox since, bought out. since Botrix is so incredibly slow with the rate message, I pasted it in, in the YouTube chat as well. So I'll see you over at my stream in just a minute. Thank you guys and have a good evening and good day. Bye bye.